Welcome to my poster talk, System Identification with Biophysical Constraints, a circuit model of the inner retina. In this project, we bridge the gap between detailed biophysical Hodgkin-Huxley-like models and pure black box models like deep neural networks. For this, we model the light processing pathway in the inner retina by 14 parallel channels, one for each bipolar subtype. In the vertical pathway, the photoreceptors are modeled as linear filters and in the next processing step, bipolar cells include a nonlinearity and a synaptical compartment, which models the temporal adaptation of the ribbon synapse. Feedback is modeled by two different pathways inspired by the two main groups of amacrine cells, local and global amacrine cells. These linear nonlinear amacrine cell modules inhibit the incoming signal to the bipolar cells. Additionally, the local amacrine cells act as gatekeepers for the global amacrine cells, which is a known motive in the retinal circuitry. Consequently, our model has two processing modes. In the first one, only local amacrine cell feedback is active, which corresponds to a spatially small input stimuli. The second one includes the whole feedback structure and is active for full field stimuli. Our model was fit on a data set of so-called chirp recordings, from which we took the mean traces of the different clusters for all 14 bipolar cell types for local and full-filled stimulus condition. This corresponds to the two different model modes. We implemented and trained the model in PyTorch and compared it to two other models, a linear nonlinear baseline model and a state-of-the-art LSTM. As we can see, our BCN model, as well as the LSTM, can fit the training data almost perfectly, and also on a generalization data set of natural stimulus, the BCN model is on par with the LSTM. For both data sets, these more complex models clearly outperform the LN model. But compared to the LSTM, our BCN model has a strong advantage that we can dissect it and have a clear interpretation of different model components. We can block different signaling pathways, for example, local amacrine cells, and by this reproduce the behavior to pharmacological experiments. We can see that our model has learned the circuit motive of crossover inhibition which results in more transient release for on-cells and more release on the baseline for off-cells in the blocked condition. We can also compare the learned connectivity structure to experimental from EM extracted connectivity data. Both matrices show similar connectivity patterns and a quantification of these findings can be found in the preprint on BioArchive. Finally, we can make predictions of biophysical properties, for example, for the ribbon synapse. We found that the ready releasable pool capacity of the ribbon block shows high correlation with the experimentally measured global transients index, which is measuring how transient the cell is. Additionally, the ready releasable pool capacity and the transfer rate from intermediate pool to the ready releasable pool separates the 14 cell types in clusters, indicating that these parameters might be essential for the emergence of different bipolar cell types. Concluding, we can summarize that we trained a network model of temporal processing in the IPL, including known structural constraints and biophysically inspired mechanisms. Our model has learned all 14 bipolar cell types and generalizes well to new stimuli. In silico pharmacological experiments, as well as the learned connectivity structure, reproduce experimental findings. Finally, our model can make predictions on biophysical properties which can be tested experimentally. We are convinced that this is a promising way to model neural circuits, but of course more work has to be done to include, for example, spatial components. Thank you for listening, and if you are interested in more details, come to the poster session or check out our preprint on BioArchive.